Daniel chapter 19. Let's look at verse number one. I'm preaching the idol in the bed. Look at your neighbor and say, the idol in the bed. Now, this would not be a time to leave service right now because you will totally miss it if you leave here talking about that pastor said he's preaching on an idol in the bed and not let me explain or express myself. So it would behoove you to stay around for just a few minutes and let me preach this on out. Hallelujah. So stay in touch. Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan Saul's son delighted much in David. Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father seeks to kill you. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning and abide in a secret place and hide thyself. Praise God. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will commune with my father of thee. And, I, and what I see, that I will tell thee. Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee word very good. For he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine. And the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. You saw it, and you rejoiced. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swear, as the Lord lives, he shall not be slain. Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all these things, and Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul. My goodness, son, what will make you happy. <laughs> He's mad at him again. He wants to kill him again. Father, I thank you for allowing us this incredible opportunity. Bless now as I read the word. Help me, Father God, to be extremely accurate, to be uh, led by the Spirit, that my flesh will not get in the way. And that, Father God, I will preach and bless the precious sheep that are in this place, your people. God, I'm thankful. Help me, Lord God, to love them, to encourage them and strengthen them. And God, even at times, to challenge them. Father, let them take it as they should. In the mighty name of Jesus, let everybody say amen, amen. and amen. Let's clap our hands for the reading of the Word of God today. <laughs> Praise God. You can be seated in the Lord's house. I'm preaching the idol in the bed for Samuel chapter 19 takes some turns, some twists, things that aren't unexpected, especially when you know the life of Saul, you know the life of David, and you know Jonathan. When you know Jonathan was close to David, he had a heart for him, had compassion for him. He saw his integrity, his character, his gifting. He saw the rejection of his brothers that pushed him out to the field to stay there when Samuel came over to anoint David. And Jesse standing there, and here comes Samuel with a horn of oil because Saul was anointed with a vial. I love to talk about the difference between these two. And David walked in the house because Samuel had asked Jesse, is this it? Because there's seven of them, I don't feel this. This is not happening. Now, I'm paraphrasing. And Jesse said, there's one in the field. They called him in. Samuel said, that's him. Jonathan knew all the backstory. They were close. They had relationship. That a kindred spirit, evidently. But there was something about David that God gave him favor with Jonathan that was right up and next to Saul, which is Jonathan, Saul's son. It's amazing in your life how that God will send intentional people to walk beside you through battles and difficulties that you look back over your life periodically and go, that is exactly why God sent that person to me. It's amazing. Can I just tell you real quick? Maybe you'll get something out of this. Your whole life is a setup when you're saved. When you're washed in the blood of Jesus, there will be people you met 30 years ago that God will bring back into your life to bless you right now for such a time as this. And you forgot about them. You forgot you even knew them. 
But it's amazing how that God can send the right people into your life. He will send the right people when it looks like sudden destruction's coming. He will send the right people that have the right word to say and the right temperament and the right discernment to know this is what you need to do right now. Most people probably would not have gone and hid in a secret place. But David knew Jonathan. And he knew that Jonathan knew Saul. And when he came back to him, because in verse number one, Saul spoke to Jonathan and to all his servants, they, this is what he said, you all better kill David. Get rid of him. That is exactly what Saul told them. Jonathan then comes back and says, my daddy tells me everything. I know his heart. I know his intentions. I listen to him talk. I hear everything that goes on motivationally in his heart to do. And I'm telling you, David, you go and dwell in a secret place. Abide in the secret place. What is the secret place? You'll find it in Psalms 91. And you'll find it in a variety of places through the word of God. And it still comes back to this meaning. A covering, a shelter, a hiding place. Secrecy is what it means. Jonathan saw his son delighted much in David. So much so that Jonathan told David to abide in a secret place. This allowed David time to get with God. It pulled him out of the warfare. It pulled him out of the entanglement. It pulled him into a place of covering, a shelter, a hiding place, a secret place. What a great time to go be alone with God when there has been an assassin that has told his very son and all of the men of the kingdom. I want David dead. And Jonathan circles back and says, go hide in the secret place. I come to tell you, Moses knew about the secret place. When God told him, I will hide you in the cleft of the rock. Some of you have been through some things can't nobody understand. But when God takes you and puts you in the secret place and allows you to see the backside of his glory, something happens to you when you go in the secret place. There are some of you that have had to fight some hell and high water but when God brother Pippins pulls you in the secret place uh, can't nobody do you like God can when he talks to you in secret and loves you in secret and pushes you in secret This allowed David time to get with God. This allowed David to display his heart to God. This allowed David to say, God, I'm on the run. I do have some anxiety. I've got some concern. But God, I've trusted you this far. I've got a friend in Jesus. But I've also got a friend in Jonathan. I've got a friend in Jehovah Jireh. But I've got a friend in Jonathan who told him, you go hide. You go pray. You go take a break. You go rest your mind for a minute. I got this. I will take care of my daddy and our father will take care of you. I love the secret place. You know why it's called the secret place? It's because of what you tell him in secret. You don't tell everybody I'm struggling, but you can get in a secret place and secretly tell God, God, I'm struggling. You can't tell everybody you feel oppressed, but you can go into a secret place where ain't nobody else can hear what you got to say and say, Lord, I feel some oppression on my mind. You can't tell everybody when you're going through a battle that feels bigger than you, but you can go into the secret place that nobody will ever hear what you're telling God and he will never share your secrets. As long as you never tell anybody else, it will always be a secret place because the secret won't get out from the secret place. But it's in that secret place when God will come commune with you and give you what you need that nobody else can give you. Can't nobody love on you like God. Can't nobody send a hand to me like God. Can't nobody knows exactly what you need like God does. You are here today because God sent you on an assignment. You're about to understand that there is a place in God. I'm telling you it's joy that is unspeakable and it's full of glory. You've got to find that in your life, there are going to be moments that you have to go to the secret place. I'm telling you with every ounce that is within me, I don't know how people make it that never spend any time in the secret place. Amen. Praise God. Now, I don't know if that just made you mad or just a little soft something come through the service there. Maybe it challenged you a little bit, but saints of God, I'm telling you after two or three days of walking around, act like I don't have to pray. 
About the fourth day, I realize. Sometimes within the first day, the three hours, I realize. I better pray. I didn't pray this morning yet. Sorry, God, I got busy. You've got to spend time in the secret place. You've got to spend time with God. You've got to take some opportunity. I know this isn't popular preaching, but I'm not here to be popular. The doctor doesn't always tell me what's popular. The doctor doesn't always sit me down and say, you look great. Congratulations, you're up to 235. No, he sends me notes after I leave and says, go on a diet. Then go do some exercise. I don't get mad at him and puffed up. I just say, wow, I guess I need to trim down and go exercise like I already am. Are y'all with me, saints? I'm just trying to tell you, you got to go to the secret place. If David was a king and got anointed and was in the lineage of Jesus, but he still had to go to the secret place, who are we to say we don't need to pray? Now, let me love you like a shepherd. Let me preach like a pastor, and we're going to get through this together. Jonathan to Saul spoke good of David. He spoke, therefore, then committed to never kill David, and then David was brought in and spent time with Saul and Jonathan. It's amazing. A little communication with the son and the father fixes everything. Oh, yeah, and by the way, while that communication's going on, somebody's over here in the secret place. God, I know you're able. I killed a lion and a bear. I killed Goliath. God, I know you're able. I was minding my own business. I I just carried some parched corn and some cheese and some bread, and God, you picked on me right there and said, I want you to kill this giant. God, you've been faithful. If you kill the giant and the lion and the bear, you can take care of Saul. God, my life is in your hands. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. He's praying this, and and Saul is being told by his son Jonathan, you rejoice when David fought those battles and won. You were there encouraging him. He's played the music for you and calmed them old evil spirits. And you are after him. What's wrong with you? And Saul said enough. I won't kill him. As long as I live, I will not kill him. Saints of God, listen to me. Your prayer changes things. Your prayer shifts things. There's something about the power of prayer. Well, as you know how life is, it sometimes can get you out of one battle only to send you into another one. Sometimes it can give you some temporary peace and battles cease and everything feels good. Then all of a sudden, here comes the Philistines again. The Philistines come up again and the Bible said there is war again. You're always going to have war. There's always going to be things you have to tend with. There's always going to be things you have to battle. If you're a pastor, it's always fine-tuning. It's always adjusting. It's asking people to work with you. It's having this to do and that to do and this thing you need to stay on top of and this thing you need to stay on top of. Then you have to go back and remind people of things they said they would do three months ago. Oh, come on, Jesus, and help us. It's always a war. There's always things that are going on. Come on, can I say amen? There's always battles. I tell people all the time, ministry is (laughs) whack-a-mole. I wasn't speaking in tongues. I said whack-a-mole. It just came out like that. (laughs) Whack-a-mole. You know what whack-a-mole is, don't you? It's when you go to the carnival and you you pay a quarter to little moles pop up and you got this big old... (laughs) It's got a big soft head on it. You just whack the moles. One pops up, you whack him. He gets back. Oh, then you whack that one. And it's whack them all. And people wear themselves out whacking moles. That is the job of a pastor. (laughs) Whack them all. (laughs) You can go ahead and ease yourself of your burden right now. Smile at your neighbor and say, I know he ain't talking about me. That's right. Come on. War hits again. War hits again. There was war again, and this is where David was gifted. He was a deliverer. David was gifted to deliver. He had a deliverance ministry because whenever giants and bears and and lions came, he had a ministry gift to deliver people. And it happened there with the giant of Gath in the valley of Elah. That's all. Thank God. And then there's war. Then the Bible said the the evil spirit came upon Saul. Now, it it sounds a little bit like that God sent it, but the the Bible is actually saying that God allowed it. Because God pretty much looked down from glory and said, then have it your way, Saul. 
If you don't want my presence, if you don't want to act like a king and be a king after my heart, then I'm going to allow what you have uh, by default welcomed into your life. God is not going to push his will on you. He isn't going to grab you by the nap of the neck and make you go to church. Let me tell you something. He, now the devil will push his will on you. But God is a loving God. He will woo you and pull on you and tell you how wonderful heaven's going to be and how great the goodness and mercies of God are. I'm telling you, saints of God, that's God. That other voice is that the other voice that come to steal and kill and destroy. But there's that voice of God constantly pulling on you. There was an evil spirit from the Lord that was upon Saul. When you allow jealousy and envy to hang out in you, the Lord will allow evil spirits to oppress you. He will let you have your way. When you don't want the anointing and you want jealousy and envy, you can replace them out. Your jealousy and envy will choke the anointing from moving through you or on you in the Old Testament. Being covetous, of someone else and what they're doing or what, come on saints, that stuff will start to choke the anointing off of your life. If you'll just get a heart after God, watch God start working everything out for you. Praise God, hallelujah. All of this is going on. And I wanted to permit a pause in the service here. Because if there's any one thing I want you to get, besides three or four things today, is this part right here. All of this is going on. Saul is mad. David just slew a bunch more Philistines. Saul is jealous and envy and aggravated and frustrated. And David is there, and he sees Saul with a javelin in his hand. And he knows, David knows, I'm going to get killed. But read your Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 19, and let's take a quick look at what David is doing when Saul has a javelin in his hand, and he's whispering, I will kill him. The Bible says, and David was playing. Sometimes what God has brought you to and how he brought you to it is what you have to remain faithful doing in order to stay where you are. Can I remind you of something right now? That woman that married you, married you for several reasons. And, and the shame of it is oftentimes we, we marry you and you quit doing what you did to get her. <laughs> Praise God. This is, I probably, it's probably not the right time to preach this, right? I probably got the wrong message. David, listen to me. David was not anointed for no other reason but for this. David was brought into the king. Everybody heard about David for one reason. You know why? Because Saul was in the palace and things weren't going his way. And you know what they said? Does anybody know of a cunning player that can come in and play me some music? Enter little David. He wasn't a giant killer then. He played the harp. And it's when King David came in, not then, he came in and played the harp and he had such an anointing on his life that the evil spirit that Saul is the one that welcomed into his life, it got so bad that when he played, all that oppression left and the evil left because the anointing showed up and touched that king right there where he was. That was before he was a giant slayer. You know what that tells me, saints of God? If you pray to get where you are right now, you better keep on praying. If you worship to get where you're at, if you praise to get where you're at, you better keep on praising. You better keep on worshiping. If you shouted to get where you are, you better keep on shouting. If you ran, you better run. If you leap, you better 
jump. I'm telling you, saints of God, it's how God brought you in. You better hang on to what brought you where you are. I see people get saved. I see people get saved. They get fired up. They clap their hands. They want to get up near the front. I see them come up and they're so eager to come to church and they get here early, get in the parking lot, almost beat the people that unlock the house in the door and they're trying to straighten up hymn books and put stuff back together and pick up pieces of paper and lint and dust and <laughs> shouting debris. It's all over the church. And they come in, they're eager. And then little by little by little, something happens to them where they quit coming early. I'm not going to do that anymore. Do y'all understand where I'm going? Saul wants to kill him. And David's sitting there playing. You know what David said? I know what works. I know what works. I know what works. Everybody knows when you get in trouble, there's some things you can do that will get you out of trouble. Every mama knows when her kids or her, her battles are increasing. Every daddy knows when he's going through heartache and trial. Every daddy knows, man, I got, I got to pray. I got to call on Jesus because I know where my help comes from. I need to get me a scripture in the word of God. I need to bend on God. I'm going to cut back worrying. I'm going to cut back nagging and gossiping. and I'm going to get in my Bible because I need a word from God. Everybody knows what you got to do when the battle gets hot. And Christians, you can't give up now. Christians, you can't let down now. Christians, you can't turn back now. If we're ever going to pray now, it's the time to pray. If we're ever going to praise, now is the time to praise. It might even help if you stand up and just clap your hands and say, God, you're still God. God, you still not lost any power. God, you are still able. Come on, turn around and tell a few people, high five them and say, you better hang in there. Come on, tell them, hang in there. Let me tell you what happens. Even when you are under threat of your life and about to die, but you just keep doing what brought you here. <laughs> Praise God. I'm sure little brother David didn't sing Appalachian style, but he probably sang a song. Little David, play on your harp. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, David, play on your harp. Hallelujah. You ever heard them songs? He was probably singing something, but he played in the midst of adversity. Saints of God, you got to praise. You got to worship. You got to keep coming to church. You got to hang on to Jesus with everything you got. You got to, you got to hold on when the storm gets heavy. You got to hold on when the furnace gets hot. You got to open up your Bible when your flesh says, I don't feel like reading my Bible. You got to open it up and read it anyhow. When your flesh wants to have a Netflix binge, you got to open up the Bible and say, I refuse to back up and bend and budge and bow. I'm going on with Jesus and I'm not being held up. I'm going to keep on. I don't care if the devil's got a javelin and says you're going to die. I shall live and not die. I dare somebody to shout the word of God. I shall live. He's playing, he's doing what he knows to do, and here's what the Bible said. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with a javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. You ever look back over your life and said, only God could have got me out of that one. 
You ever look back over your life for just a minute to say, only God could have brought me through that deep ditch. Only God could have carried me over that river. There's some people, I know it's raining outside. I know you got limbs to pick up in your yard. I know the neighbors and the leaves blew all up in your driveway. But come on, forget about it for just a minute and look back over your life to a sunshiny day that if it had not been the Lord on your side, you'd have went under. But if it had not been for God on your side, you wouldn't have made it. Shout, I know it was God. David slips away. David slips away. David slips away. Man, conveniently, God just allowed him to stop playing and slides right out of the room. Javelins are hitting the wall. Stone is coming undone. Debris is flying everywhere. Saul is angry and aggravated and like, where did he go? Didn't he get it that when God's hand is on you, he will set you up before the people and he will pull you out and hide you that no one can see you? Doesn't he know that the prophet of God spoke and the Bible said a whole army was blinded and he was leading them back into town? But he, oh, come on, somebody. I said sometimes he'll knock the sight out of the enemy so he can get you out of town to where you're going. Y'all ready? So, Saul sent messengers to Michal. Now, you can say, my call, my shall, me shall. I just like Michal. M-I-C-H-A-L. Have it your way. <laughs> Today, she's Michal. All right? And if, it's probably more of a, you know, a grunt in the C&H. All right? But... That's Saul's daughter. Y'all know who Michal is. He won her when he killed Goliath. Hey, Amen. And tax abatements for his family. And oh, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> he goes to her house. He goes to her house. Sends people to the house. And he said, the people that Saul sent, they said, hey, your dad's looking for your husband, David. And she goes, he's in the bed. He's sick. Can't get up. The Bible says that she took an image and she put it in the bed. And she took a bolster, which is a pillow, and some goat's hair. And made it look like that was David. An image. But you got to know what an image is. An image in the Bible is a teraphim. It's an idol. <laughs> Sometimes God will go out of his way to pull some things in and just completely cover them up and call it sick. To slip his man out the window. That's it. It's the idol in the bed that delayed the army enough time for David and his wife to open up a window, which means a window in the Bible is a piercing in the wall. And some of you have got so many walls built up around you. I'm going to go to church, but I'm going to sit there the whole time. Because I put myself up a wall. But God is getting ready to put a window in your wall. And pull you. There's all kinds of people when I'm preaching. I can see who has the walls up. I can tell. Praise and worship's going on. I see the walls all over this place. I see people. I ain't moving, preacher. Don't care. Wear yourself out. I'm sitting right here because I've developed a wall. Me and the devil, we hang out together and I got a wall up. You're not coming on this side of the wall. Well, I come by to tell you, precious sir or ma'am, there is a Holy Ghost that can jump up over every wall, walk through walls, walk under walls, go through ditches, hang, go in the club, 
Get right there where you're making a deal. Get right there where you're messed up, jacked up, and tore up from the floor up. There's a Holy Ghost that can go beyond every wall you ever build. There's not a wall too big. There's not a border he can't cross. There ain't a country he can't go into. I come by to tell you, give up. Let it go. God is opening up a window, and you're getting ready to jump out of it. Then, 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 they come back to Saul, and they say, your son-in-law's sick. We saw him in the bed. Saul said, let's go again. Saul gets down there, and he says to my cow, his daughter, bring me David out of the bed. She uncovers it. There's this big idol laying there. And he says, why have you done this? Then she tells a lie and says, well, he was about to kill me. So I had to let him go. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Listen, not everybody on your side is on your side when the trouble hits. <laughs> you like that, James? <laughs> I got more. We was on Brown School Road one time, and... Uh, uh, apparently, over there in Vandalia, rules are a little different. They just don't let you start up a fire in your parking lot. Well, I wasn't trying to start a big fire. I was just trying to burn up some twigs. And so uh, I had got this genius idea that we was going to start a little fire. Then I'm going to pour some kerosene on it. And uh, it got, whew, and it went up. And I'm like, praise God, we're going to burn these sticks up. And we was all standing there looking at it, and it was in the fall of the year, and I was saying, praise God, look what the Lord has done. He's cleared all the trees out and got a little bundle of sticks, and it wasn't a big deal. We wasn't roasting the marshmallows or hot dogs, but that fire started coming up pretty good. Man, I turned around, and here come the fire department. They come rolling in the parking lot, starting to pull out hoses. People were going, hold it, hold it. And the fire department said, who's the leader over this? A couple of the people in the church went, he is. I knew right then and there, you're not for me. All the rest of them just looking like this, they're for me. <laughs> I wish everybody would have said, we all did it. Hose us down, hallelujah. You will know who's on your side when trouble hits. When the enemy walks in your house and said, where'd you put him? And you look at him and say, well, he tried to kill me, so I let him go. No, that ain't what happened. You need to open up your mouth and say, hey, God is on that man's side, daddy. I can't help it. He has come out from under you so many times. I can't help but say, you need to get over your jealousy and envy. God's hands on that boy. I said, glory to God. Brother Tim, it'd be a good place for me to shout right here. It'd be a good place for me to just take my shoes off, put on my gym shoes and run around the building. I'm telling you, God is faithful. When everybody else sells you out, God's already made a way for you to get out the window. It don't matter. It's over. You're on up the road, down the street, and God is still large and in charge. When somebody in redemption stand up and clap your hands and shout, preach on. Young preacher. Woo. Here's how it ends. It's incredible. You know, when David slipped away, I can't blame him, Nick. When David slipped away, you know where he went back to? He goes back to when the anointing came. <laughs> they said, where is he? Where's David? Well, David took a trip. He left. He's gone. He's nowhere around here. I need to know where he's at. Well, he went back to Samuel. Went back to the guy that anointed him by the hand of God. He took a journey and he found him. So they sent some men to Ramah to find David. And the men came up and there were uh, prophets everywhere. 
And all they could see was Samuel right in the middle of all the prophets prophesying. And the anointing was so heavy they could not find David. They didn't even see David. All they felt was the anointing of God. I need his help in my life right now. You know what, saints of God, there's times I don't need somebody clapping their hands. I need the anointing of God to come down and help me. When I go through things, I can't even describe to people. And you know what's amazing about this precious anointing? This anointing will hide you. The one that should be dead. He should have had a javelin in him. And oh, by the way, Jonathan should have had one in him too. Because Saul even wanted to kill Jonathan. But the anointing got so heavy that day that when those men went to spy out David, you read the last part of chapter 19. The Bible said that they went and looked and all they saw was Samuel, but there was such a heavy anointing that fell upon that place. It is one thing to praise the Lord. It is one thing to worship God. But when the thick cloud of glory comes in the house and the anointing starts to ooze in the congregation, something begins to happen that God will make a way where there seem to be no way at all. Somehow God will walk up in the house and start touching people and sickness has to leave. He'll start touching people and depression has to go. He'll start touching people and blood sugar levels are regulated and everything comes back into sync. But he will hide you out in the secret place. Oh, I'm so glad for the anointing of God that'll wreck every hell, every devil, that'll wreck every assignment, that'll wreck every assassin. I'm so glad. I tell you, I tell you something else. They, uh, they saw him over there praying. They seen him over there praying. Come on, come on, Gary. Come on, Jonathan. Come on, Jeremy. Brother Gibbons. Come on, Nick. Come on. Come on, Doug. Come on. Give me some young men. Come on. Give me about six of you in the front row. Praise God. Give me all of you. Move it quickly. <laughs> Hurry it up. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Say that while I'm smiling. Y'all get up in that corner, please. All of you in the corner, up there. Now you gotta move it, boys. Up in the corner. Praise God. Just take your time. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Everybody get on the ground. Everybody get on the ground. Just take your time. Brother Gibbons. Come here, Samuel. Yeah, Brother Gibbons like, oh, thank you, preacher. <laughs> you stand right there. Then Saul sent an army. Give me an army of men. Come on. Give me an army of men. Give me about a dozen of you. And do not take your time. Come on. Give me a dozen of you. That, that's good right there. Who I got standing. This is good. Come on. Come on. Come with me, guys. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to walk over there. Y'all are just going to fall right down on your, don't fall, but just get right down on your face. Okay, that's what you're going to do. Now, you didn't hear about, let me tell you what's going to happen. This is what happened when Saul sent an army the first time, and they went over there, and they saw Samuel with his hands lifted in the air, Brother Gibbons. And they, they, they saw him prophesying, and all the others around had their heads bowed, and their hands were up. All, there's a roar of the glory happening, and Saul's army goes over there to see what's going on. They want to find David. But watch what happens to Saul's army when they get close to the anointing and the presence of God. Look what basadele kepatele monda. Woo! Somebody better tell your neighbor, the enemy is coming with attackers, but God is going to put them right on the ground. Because God is getting ready to turn your circumstance. Shout, he's going, turn it, turn it, turn it. Woo! What happened to my men? 
What happened to my men? What happened to my men, Michael? What happened to my men? Where did they go? I'm Saul. What happened to them? I sent them to kill him. What are they doing? I'll go to Ramah myself. And Saul, with his pride and arrogancy, he comes upon them. And there they are, prophesying again. There they are with hands lifted up. There they are, the glory of God. And it, it's so thick that you can't even tell where David is. And by the time Saul gets up there, what does he do? He starts stripping off his clothes. And he's down to just his tunic or his undergarments. And he falls on the ground. And the anointing hits him one last time and fell on him. The anointing is about to hit somebody and it's going to shift and it's going to turn. My God, come on, redemption. I preached about it and preached about it and we've watched God do it over and over. Would somebody bless the Lord? Come on, man, let's stand up and give God a shout all the way to our seats. Come on. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know I win. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. No, no matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. Walk around and tell your neighbor, I win. I win. I win. I win. I win. I win. Don't stop clapping your hands, keep shouting, I win, I win. Now get up out of your seat and move your feet and tell your neighbor, I win, I win. Come on, let's have some fun. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win, yeah. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. Tell your neighbor, say, no matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. One more time, say, I win. and say it like this, I win, I win. Come on, talk to me, talk to your neighbors. I win, I win, I win. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. No, oh, no, no matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. The weapon is, I want you to know that I win. Sometimes in a service like this, you will feel me getting a little pushy. Please, please understand my heart. It's not my personality. Well, sometimes it is. But as a shepherd, sometimes I only push on you a little bit because sometimes people tend to quit when the battle gets a little heated. 
like a wife of David? They say, he's going to kill me, Dad. So I let him go. That ain't how it happened. Y'all with me? As opposed to, I let him go. I helped him out. The hand of God is on him, Daddy. And it is not on you anymore. I opened up a window for him. I scooted him right out and I put that idol in the bed and I gave it a pillow. Praise God. So saints, I only preach like this. And I don't feel like I totally have to always explain myself. But I have to tell you that I feel an urgency in my spirit. The time is getting closer and closer. And are we ready? Are we ready? So I'm going to push on you a little bit. Not to, in, not to let the enemy back you in a corner. If you're in the house and you see someone that you thought loved you, pick up a javelin and adjust it and go like this. You're just going to sit there and play. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns over heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. <laughs> Our God is an awesome God. I'm about to die right here. My God, he's an awesome God. He reigns over heaven above with wisdom. Life-giving power, our God, is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns over heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. I will hide out if I have to so he don't take my life. I said, I will hide out if I have to. God will pull me into a secret place, shove me right out the door and saw standing there going, where'd he go? I was just doing what I did to get me where I'm at. And I just want to thank him for being good. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. You know and I know. There's people in here right now that need to come and pray and just say, God, you got to take this. God, you got to take it. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Altar workers, line up quickly, hurry. Come on. I'm, I, I just feel led to do it this way. So just negotiate with me. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody in the house, come on. The altar's open. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come up here and say, God, I've had this long enough. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come and stand. There's tons of room because I want to do something else really quick. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Our God. He's an awesome God. He reigns. Over heaven and earth with wisdom, yeah, yeah. Power and love, our God is an awesome God. Praise God. How many is not saved today? Raise your hand. Pastor, I'm not saved. I know I need Jesus. Raise your hands anywhere in the house. Pastor, I'm not saved. I'm not saved. I need Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Anyone, 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 or two, or three, or four, or five. Come on, raise your hand. Pastor, I need Jesus. Ain't no doubt in my mind. Come on, anywhere in the house. I'm just making sure. If there's anybody that needs the Lord, anybody that needs the Lord. Now, if you can't raise your hand, you are saved. Then you might need to come and pray. Come on, come on. If you don't feel like you're ready or where you should be or need to be, come and pray. Come and pray. Come and pray. Let Jesus have it all. Let Jesus have it all. Let Jesus have it all. Everybody saved? Okay. Praise God. Praise God. All those of you that know how to pray, go to lifting up your hands. Go to lifting up your hands. God, we need you to move in this altar right now, God. There are people all in this altar that God, they're under a severe attack. God, you have made a way for them over 
and over and time and time again. God, you've been faithful. So Father, I pray the outpouring of your precious spirit would move upon your people right now, right now, right now, right now. That's it, saints. Get in there and just get to praying for people. Get in there and just lay hands on them because you know God is able. Help them. Push on them. Encourage them. Let them know it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our God. Somebody have some, somebody has some battles and difficulties you think are bigger than you. I'm going to stand right here. I want to pray for you right here. If you'll come up right here, I'll pray for you. Joe will be the first. Come on. These battles are too big, brother preacher. I need God to help me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. With wisdom, power, and love, God is an awesome God. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, you promised us miracles. God, you promised us miracles. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, touch Joe. God, touch Alice from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet to her fingertips. Healing God in Jesus' name. Healing God in Jesus' name. Touch Michael. Touch Dustin. The battle is not too big for God. The battle is not, the concern is not too big for God. Oh God, do it, do it, do it, do it. Touch God, move God, bless God, heal God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now all over the house, all over the house, lay your hand on the one you brought to church with you. Lay the hand on the one you feel close enough to. Put your hand on their shoulder and say, I'm praying for you right now. I'm praying for you right now that God's going to move, that God's going to move. God, touch people, touch people, touch people. Father, move by your spirit right now, Lord. Give strength, give peace, give help, give hope, give joy. Father God, begin to turn around the agents of hell that are coming against and tacking in the name of Jesus. God, move right now, move right now. God, bless your people, touch them, help them. Give them great strength, give them great encouragement. Give them great boldness. Father, I thank you for it. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.